Well, I have a, a few vignettes to share with you from Reader's Digest. These are true, true vignettes, but I want you to kind of, as you hear them, I want you to think how they might be related or they might be connected. So the first one is, we were en route to Atlanta when my stepfather spotted some mules by the side of the road. Relatives, he asked my mother. <laughs> Not taking the bait, she responded. Yeah, through marriage. <laughs> I was on my way out of the house to meet with a cantankerous client and I was dreading it. The look on my face must have given me away because my four-year-old daughter asked what was wrong. Well, I'm going to meet a woman who always yells at daddy, I told her. Oh, she said, well, say hi to mom. <laughs> and finally, even with a thousand games, dolls, and crafts to choose from, my customer at the toy store still couldn't find a thing for her grandson. Maybe a video or something educational, I asked. No, that's not it, she said. We wandered the aisles until something caught her eye. A laser gun with flashing lights and 15 different high-pitched sounds. This is perfect, she said, beaming. My daughter-in-law will hate it. <laughs> now, the connection between these vignettes is they're all about families. They're all about dynamics that go on and occur in the context of families living their lives and doing the things that they do. And, and some of the truest things that happen are some of the most interesting and amazing and empowering and funny experiences. And it's interesting that one of the things that I, one of the reasons that I think we identify with these is because you know, it doesn't matter whether we're in this culture, or whether we're in another culture, whether we're in a different country, whether we're in a different religion, whether we're in a different dynamic, it doesn't make any difference. They're all stereotypical behaviors that occur in the context of family life. And family life is, in a sense, universal regardless of what part of the planet we're on. Yeah, there's some different beliefs and approaches and dynamics that go on, yeah. But we all recognize that the experiences that happen and the, and the and interesting things that occur and go on. And I think the reason for that is that we are more alike, you and I and, and everybody, all six billion of us on the planet, we are more alike than we are different. We are more alike than we are different and it doesn't matter where we grew up or how we grew up or what's going on in our country or what the government is or what the policies are or what the dress is or anything else, we are more alike than we are different, all six billion of us in this human family. Now the title of my lesson is You Were Formed for God's Family. And I think that, that title is essential to, under, to our understanding about how we are all connected. And it doesn't matter what our bloodlines are. We are, the truth is, we are all brothers and sisters. Every one of us. That this person on the other side of the planet or speaking before this audience or saying things that you don't like or disagree with or sharing their bluster or whatever it is that's going on or, or saying things about this country or the people in this country that you don't particularly agree with, that person is your brother or sister as much as anyone in this room is your brother and sister because we are all formed to be part of God's family. The creator, the creative energy of the universe brought us forth into being to be a part of a family, a huge family that exists on this planet. I often play a game with myself, you know, because I find myself, I don't know about you, but I find myself falling into judgmental moments occasionally about the value of another person. Have you ever seen that? You know, you're walking down the street and there may be somebody who looks like a train wreck, you know, that is sitting on the side of the road or something. And, you know, there's this instinctual part of me that makes a value judgment about them. I, you know, and I, I'm better than I used to be, but I still do it. And so I, I found that, that I need to, to often go through some mental gymnastics and so I play a game with myself and I, and I look at this person and the first question I ask myself and when I see them is, what if this person were my biological brother or sister? How would I respond to this individual if they were my 
brother and sis or sister. Right now, that if I saw my brother sitting there, what would I do? How would I show up? What kind of attitude would I have? How would I, how would I engage in this experience? And when I do that, I recognize it's easy to make the leap because the truth is that this person is my brother and sister. If you trace our bloodlines back far enough, you'll find that there is a connection to every single one of our bloodlines on this planet. There is a common connection that exists. We are literally related in some way, shape, or form. So the truth is that they are my brother and sister. And so, yes, I need some mental gymnastics to get there because I have grown up in the context of separation and in the context of seeing people as different from myself and it's taken me a while and still it's still something I work on to close that mental process that goes on and that's part of I think our spiritual growth and I think one of the reasons that we're here is to make that leap from being separate to being connected to realizing that we are one that we are one people regardless of where we live and what we're doing I realize that, you know, even if somebody is, it needs some help in a moment, sometimes I can't provide it, and, and I realize that I can't save the world. That my job isn't to come and save the world. I sometimes can hardly save myself from whatever's going on in my life. But I can, one of the things I can do, is I can live in relationship to people in the world in a way that contributes something positive. That any moment that shows up in my life, I can say a kind word, I can smile, I can extend myself. In some way, I can contribute something to the situation that I'm in. I may not be able to save this person from themselves, but I can contribute something that may be part of the process of making that connection in our life. I can give loving thoughts. I can give prayers. I can do all kinds. Of, even if I don't reach my hand out, I can stop for a moment and hold that person in the highest and best consciousness that I can experience. That's true whether it's somebody standing in front of me or whether it's somebody in another part of the world who is causing me to feel frustrated by what it is that they may or may not be doing. We were all formed to be a part of God's family. That's why we are here. And we're not, we're not limited by our human dysfunctions or human experiences. You know, one of the things I like about our unity theology is that we don't have a theology. It's my favorite thing about unity theology. We don't really have, a, in, in the traditional sense, we don't have a theology that results in, you know, rules and regulations and do this and do that and you have to do this to get there and so on and so forth. There's not like have to's or should's or shouldn'ts. It's here's what we, here's what the principles are of spiritual life. Here's what, from our, our best understanding, our best experience is that there are certain things that are true certain common threads that exist in the context of living our life. And so if you call it, if you have, we have a theology, that's what it is, is that we believe that there's only one presence and one power in the universe. We believe that that divine presence is love. And we believe that that presence exists within each one of us. And we believe that we access that presence through our thoughts and our feelings, through how we show up in the world and how we live our life. And we believe that we, we change our thoughts and feelings and experiences through prayer and meditation which include affirmations and denials and all of the stuff that we teach in our unity life and how we show up in the world. How we show up in the world is an extremely important part of that experience. But we don't attach experiences of behavior.